Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for joining this open forum, which is organized by the German IGF community. Uh, and the purpose of this meeting today is uh, to look into the workings of the IGF and to see uh, how next IGF and maybe the one after that in 2019 uh, could or should develop. The invitation uh, is issued to you by the German community. Uh, Germany cares a lot about the IGF, its workings, its outcomes, and the fact that it exists. And uh, maybe before we go into the discussion, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is uh, Thomas Fitchen. I'm the ambassador and director for a number of things at German Foreign Affairs, including German cyber foreign policy. And with me on the panel is Mr. Gredel from our Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, you, of course, uh, have heard that Germany has submitted uh, an application to become the host of the 2019 uh, IGF. That is still under consideration. But, of course, that explains a bit the interest uh, from our side and uh, so that we wanted to seize this opportunity to meet with you to discuss uh, ideas and, and to, to talk a bit about what the IGF means for us. To kick off our debate, I have contacted a number of uh, experts who were involved very much in previous IGFs and in the one that we are having right now. Uh, my proposal is that I asked those four persons that I've identified one short question, uh, and then, of course, I open up the discussion so to give all of you a chance to uh, express your own views and opinions. So my first question goes to uh, Ambassador Thomas Schneider from Switzerland. He is uh, one of the organizers of the IGF 2018. Uh, we have been informed that, or we have noticed a number of innovations, and that's also my next question to Lynn saint -Amour, who is chair of the, of the MAC. Uh, the high-level segment is new, and also the idea to have Geneva messages on the website of the IGF. Ambassador Schneider, can you give us maybe some information about what where this came from and what the background of this is. Floor is yours. Yes, thank you and, and good morning or good almost noon, uh, everybody. Um, the thing is that, of course, the, uh, as we all know, the IGF has been set up as an experiment, as something that hasn't existed before, in particular not in the UN, but actually not elsewhere either to our, to our knowledge. So uh, over the years, there have been several things that, that have been played with, if I, if I may say, in terms of format of sessions, the, the arrangement of main sessions, how the workshops are, are selected, and, and the open fora. We have a, a new format that has been introduced lately, which is called the flash sessions, which is something that uh, Eurodic, the European IGF, has introduced some, some years ago. And uh, there has been, over the years, several discussions about so-called improvements to the IGF, how to, to make it more relevant. And of course, those who have been participating in this discussion in the last 12 years know that the, this is a, a sensitive uh, issue and you need to be very careful in, in, in uh, how, how to deal with these things and that you, you, you make sure that uh, whatever you experiment with is, is, is falling on fruit, uh, fertile ground and is accepted in the end by, by the community. Um, 
we have the advantage in Europe that we have the Eurodic that I mentioned that was set up uh, by a number of, of individuals with some informal backup from some institution and has now turned into something formal. And we have had the chance to experiment and go a little further with formats than, and, 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 and uh, also the messages than, than on the global UN uh, level. And uh, so f f what, what we try to, to contribute to the experiment in terms of trying out something new th this year is, is <clears throat> as you've mentioned, the high-level sessions. It is the first time that we do not have, like in the previous 11 years, we do not have 30 or more monologue, five-minute monologues of, of VIPs from all stakeholders in a row. That's how the, the opening uh, afternoon looked like until this year. We uh, <clears throat> thought that we would try to also turn this VIP segment, or whatever you call it, into an interactive dialogue. Um, our president uh, is, 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 was very uh, uh, happy to, to be part of this and ex uh, be part of our experiment to see how this goes. It's, it's a challenging uh, uh, thing. We also managed to even have an open mic at the high-level opening session, which is uh, something that we, are, that we are proud of, that this has been uh, possible and, and people have, have played along. So, uh, and we have, uh, we have asked or discussed with the MAG whether we would have the chance to have two high-level sessions in order to not just be able to accommodate at 10 or 12, uh, which is normally like the limiting size of, of, a, of a panel, um, if you want to make it interactive with the public. So, so they basically agreed to, to let us experiment with two high-level sessions that allowed us to have like 40 or, or, or so uh, 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 high-level representatives of all stakeholders trying to balance this also with stakeholders, with regions, with different kinds of, of diversity that you need to cope with if you do something like this. And, and so this is the first time that, that this has been done. <coughs> uh, it's after that, of course, up to the MAG and up to the community to, to discuss whether they think that that has been an improvement or they would rather go back to, to having 30 monologue speeches uh, on the opening, because this is all not carved in stone in that sense, and you need to somehow every now and then test a few things to, to see, like, does this make it better? Does this make it more interactive? Does it make it more relevant? Um, so this is one of the elements that, that we thought that we, we, we want to contribute to, to to, to uh, improving the IGF in the sense of making it more interactive, also getting uh, high-level rep representatives closer to, to, to the so-called normal other uh, or expert representatives. That was one element. The other element is, is responding uh, the, to uh, an also an ongoing discussion about the outcome. There's an agreement that the outcome should be more tangible um, the question is then, what does that mean, and, and how can you do this? I think there's also an agreement that we should not go into negotiating an outcome, because that would basically destroy the openness, the space, the dialogue function, which is the, why, the, the, the function that the IGF was, was set up for. So I think that is very important to, to, to remain, uh, keep the IGF as a platform where no negotiations take place. Uh, at the same time, um, we have, so far we've had this chairman, uh, chairman's report um, that is very descriptive, it's normally like the between 15 and 30 pages or so. And because we have made the experience after 10 years of Eurodic, where from the very beginning, going back to an initiative of another German friend, Wolfgang Kleinwächter, uh, we said, okay, let's try and, and do something more tangible but not negotiated. Let's do a best effort in a, uh, by, by, uh, uh, to, to somehow reflect the discussion immediately after, like a stenographic uh, 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 report in a few bullets to try and capture what were the main elements that were discussed, what are tendencies. And we did this now in Eurodic for, for 10 years, so you can read messages from Tallinn, messages from Berlin, messages from Stockholm, messages from Lisbon. And, and uh, there are a number of people involved in writing these messages, and, and we had thought we'd try to do the same uh, here for the IGF, offer this as also something that people can tell us whether they think it is useful or not. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I wonder really how people in the room uh, see the, both the high-level segment and the idea about these messages. Lens and Demo, you're 
member of the of the MAG and one of the main sponsors and main organizers of today's uh, IGF. What's your view on these on these novelties and what else is new or do you have any recommendations how future IGFs could develop? Very briefly, please. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I am the IGF MAG chair. Um, that is not a position of particular privilege. You simply try and fall, find consensus across the, the various communities. Um, you know, we're very, very happy to innovate where we can. We had, um, I think, the fortunate um, opportunity to work with the Swiss government, who have been so long involved in internet governance discussions that they know the community well and I think know how to kind of push forward appropriately to um, get some room for some of these pilots and innovations. As Thomas said, they're not a given. Um, they were not you know, unanimously supported within the uh, last MAG, and certainly that and some of the other um, innovations around this year's IGF will be reviewed um, carefully by the incoming MAG to determine what the recommendation is with respect to, to going forward. Um, I think what, what, you know, the, the, I won't address Thomas's comments any further because I think he did an excellent job in, uh, in capturing them. I think if I can come back to the one area where much of the MAG is focused, and that's, of course, trying to ensure that the IGF remains relevant, and a part of that is how do we continue to advance kind of more concrete outcomes. You know, we hear often that it's a talking shop um, or it's just discussion. And, you know, and I start from the perspective of, um, it's discussion because the issues are intertwined, they're complex, and they're nuanced, and they really take time to understand. If there was not differing viewpoints, whether that's because of uh, differing viewpoints across stakeholders or across uh, national differences um, or, or uh, differences on substance, we wouldn't need this forum. Um, we need it exactly because of those few things I've just said. And the way, I think there's an awful lot of outcomes that come out of the IGF. I think the discussions advance. They certainly escalate and, and change over time, evolve over time. The cybersecurity discussions we were having or the discussions threatening the internet a few years ago were spam and various things. Now they're cybersecurity and, and much more <coughs> advanced. So they may have a lot of the same titles, but the topics that are under discussion today are clearly very different than 10, 11, 12 years ago. Um, those discussions look for points of commonality and agreement, and they might be captured in a best practice form, they might be captured in um, some of the other output documents, they might be captured as a norm, um, which is put out for the community for broader adoption. All those things are actions along a path to greater agreement and, and greater um, common positioning, if you will, on some of these issues. Some of those norms may even ultimately become policy or become regulation. But every one of them, whether again it's, it's input that's taken back through a national and regional IGF initiative or a private sector company takes back what they heard and learned and brings that into their own discussions or governments, all those are actions that are actually helping to evolve those issues. So I think one of the challenges for us is to find a better way to, to talk about the value proposition of the IGF. And secondly, um, certainly to find a way to make all the great information that's captured in the 200 odd sessions there are here at this IGF, much more accessible, much more comprehensible. Um, so the um, MAG is continuing to look at um, ways to do that. Our most severe restriction, of course, is resources and funding. We are severely under-resourced and we have a secretary to four people. One of them is a full-time IT person and a part-time volunteer MAG chair. So a lot of the efforts are really focused on managing this annual forum Although now, of course, the IGF is much more than the annual forum. It is all the intersessional events, best practice forums, dynamic coalitions, major policy program on connecting and enabling the next billion, and of course, all the national and regional IGF initiatives and dynamic coalitions. So I'll stop there. and happy to take any other questions later. Thank you very much. So the outcome is that the discussion moves forward. It's hard to prove, but the issue of, of access to our discussions. Yeah, thank you very much. The next person I would like to ask a very direct question is Ambassador Fonseca from Brazil, because you have organized the previous uh, IGF, which was my first one, and of course the Net Mundial. So your experience uh, is, is very important to us. What's your take on the novelty and the importance of the IGF? Please, close yours. Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me to this uh, discussion. Well, first of all, I'd like to start by uh, 
putting the IGF in the larger uh, uh, context of internet governance uh, ecosystem. Uh, we think uh, IGF, on the one hand, is part of this landscape, larger landscape, but one that has a very unique role uh, in, uh, as was said by uh, Thomas and also Lynn, the, to, to provide a very unique place for multi-stakeholder dialogue, uh, interaction, and exploration of issues, e even though not in a, a mandatory uh, way, but I think this is indeed one of the strengths of IGF, and we uh, in Brazil, we value uh, extremely uh, the importance of IGF. We have been enthusiastic supporters of IGF since the beginning. As you have said, we have hosted IGF in 2015. I think this is the, one, the meeting you have referred to. But before that, we had also hosted in 2007. So we have hosted two editions of IGF. And uh, yeah, uh, for us, it's very natural to participate in IGF because uh, in Brazil, the, the format we have adopted for discussing internet governance issues internally mirrors the, the way IGF is uh, shaped. Uh, actually, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, a multi-stakeholder body, was established in 95, 10 years before uh, the Tunis Agenda uh, uh, endorsed and validated the notion of multi-stakeholder participation. So we are very comfortable and willing to, to strengthen IGF. Uh, I was very happy yesterday. I heard that the Brazilian delegation was the third largest delegation to this IGF, uh, which uh, I think is meaningful being a meeting in a different continent and in winter, <laughs> <laughs> which for some of us is a very particular challenge. Uh, so uh, looking ahead, and I fully concur with what was said by both Thomas and Lynn, that IGF has been uh, evolving uh, over the years, adopting new uh, methods of work uh, and seeking ways in which, uh, through which, even by retaining its major characteristics, not changing it, it would be impossible to do so, but to uh, increasingly develop uh, what we call the tangible outputs, tangible outcomes, be it in the form of the product of best practice for uh, best by best capturing the discussions within IGF itself. Uh, and working, I, I would also mention that in Brazil in 2015, we launched the first edition of the Connect Next Billion Online document, which is a, a kind of a toolbox uh, aimed at uh, practitioners, uh, both from public and non-public sector. Uh, in that area, we think it's a very useful uh, tool. Uh, and in this IGF, the third edition will be launched. So this is something also that has been evolving. And, and I think th this is the kind of uh, thing that should be further explored, how out of the very rich discussions that take place in IGF, we can take out uh, inputs, document that will feed into other processes that would go beyond the community that meets in this environment. Uh, I think it's uh, in itself important that the community will meet and discuss, but it's also important that its outcomes will be conveyed to the outside uh, world in, in a way, uh, in a meaningful way. And uh, I think th this has been uh, a very important experience in that regard. And also, as Thomas has said, even in the organization of the meeting itself, like in the opening ceremony, uh, the interactive discussion, the open mic, I think those are also innovations that uh, will indeed uh, provide new impetus for IGF in the second cycle, 10 years second cycle that we are not inaugurating this meeting, but we are following, uh, it's on a very early stage. We think the, the, the trend is very positive and one that we would encourage. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you very much. And thanks for reminding us of the that IGF in its structure and in, in the participants reflects also our internal digital IT communities that are interested, NGOs, academia, the private sector, everyone is, is involved. Thank you. My last brief introductory speaker would be Professor Rothart, an old hand uh, of All Matters IGF uh, from Germany. Uh, your views are, of course, uh, particularly welcome. And after that, I would open the discussion, uh, of course, to the general audience to react either to the four introductory statements or to anything else 
that you would like to raise about the future or the present of the IGF? Professor Rotter, please. Okay, although I'm missing the question, <laughs> I, I heard what um, uh, the <clears throat> colleagues uh, said before, and if, if I look back, uh, there was a change in, uh, in the last years, and especially from the private sector, um, where I'm um, uh, chairing uh, a co-chair in, in, in Germany, uh, came the request on uh, on messages from to, to have some takeaways at least to um, to give um, to give a, a back home once they are back home uh, from from their travel and their discussions um, to show what what was uh, talking about in Germany we made the experience some years ago uh, to have a real uh, multi stakeholder meeting in terms of um, uh, when it, when it came to um, a letter uh, to ICANN because of the uh, uh, um, NTR uh, uh, stuff but we were also and you mentioned it before uh, 2019 we will be in Germany so it's much more a way for us to look forward to see what is coming and to gain deeper experiences here. And what I've seen here, um, although I think Thomas did a, did a very good job here um, uh, as a last minute organization in, in, in this environment, at this time of the year having so many attendees, I think it were more than he expected to come. Um, and ho hopefully we will have this in Germany as well. But I can see a little bit over the last year and this year, a little bit unbalancing from uh, some stakeholder groups, which means uh, some are m more uh, represented, others are less represented. And I'm not sure, first I thought it was um, due to the time of the year, but uh, then I reflected last year um, in, Me in Mexico, the IGF and uh, similar experience. Um, this is certainly uh, something to look more on the balancing of, of the attendees, uh, which is sometimes a question of the program and of the layout of the program. And, and I'm happy to see more and more uh, at the IGF interventions instead of lengthy discussions and I would also love to uh, see more disappearing the panels with many people um, on it and, and having very short um, messages and then more interactive so the takeaways um, are uh, uh, more precise instead of having the view from a single person and everyone is nodding the head and uh, reading its mail. And uh, this is one point. Uh, <clears throat> What I think uh, one should look at, and especially uh, in terms of 2019, of course we had some ideas on, on what can be done in, in further um, uh, IGFs. Uh, we have dedicated, and as Lynn said, of course uh, there are nearly the same title, but uh, different content because uh, things change, cybercrime changed from uh, uh, credit cards to much more uh, difficult things, uh, but we said um, pro projects or themes out of the uh, cyber um, uh, cyber security uh, will be important over the year 2019 and 2020 um, because uh, you also have to give those people doing the regulation Lynn mentioned for uh, before. Um, you have to give some hints on what the, all the stakeholders are thinking of and, and what, is, uh, what is their idea, what can be done. Uh, uh, sometimes, in, in former times, we had um, laws from, from, from government and then they found out, oh, technology has gone some steps further, so laws do not work really. That was the time when the multi-stakeholder uh, mechanism were, were born. And we also had, uh, especially in, in this time, and I think uh, for next year, um, this should, should also be already uh, elaborated on, that is um, from the area of the digital economy and the future of work. Uh, how, does, how does this uh, 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 work out? And um, 
the further development of the multi-stakeholder uh, project. I think beside uh, the novelties uh, Thomas was talking about, uh, we should have r rapporteurs for getting short messages and um, we have seen in, at the Eurodic uh, that the messages from the various, and we did this in Germany uh, since we have an IGF, uh, for, for uh, many years already to have messages from those various IGFs, and this has to be, uh, has been proven as, as very helpful also for the next IGF. And I would like to point out on the IGF daily for those who missed something, uh, um, that was new, what I've seen, and I love it to get a short glance on, on what happened uh, uh, because you cannot attend all the meetings. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So I think what all four speakers mentioned was in one way or the other the, the, the takeaways. What are the messages that we can uh, get, bring back home to our own constituency? How can we explain uh, what we're doing here? Before I open the floor to your statement, just one clarification. Uh, Germany has submitted so far the application for 2019, but the formal decision hasn't been taken. So I just wanted to clarify that we're not talking about something that will happen in Germany, but it's most, still open for decision. Most probably. There's a more pressing concern that we still need a host for 2018 rather than. So let's properly wait for the official announcement. Thank you. Having said that, I would like, I think you were the first. Uh, could you please briefly introduce yourself and really try to be very short and precise so that we have as many speakers as possible within the remaining time. Close yes. yours. Thank you very much. My name is Matthias Spielkamp. I'm the so-called co-chair for the civil society and academia stakeholder groups in the steering committee of the German IGF. Um, and uh, this, these groups have representatives from several universities, the Berlin Social Sciences Center on the academic side and organizations like Amnesty International, Reporters Without Borders, the United Nations Association of Germany, um, or the organization that I represent, iRights, on the uh, civil society side. And um, I would like to add here to this discussion that, as you all know, Germany has a very strong civil society and academic community, and both of these communities see the potential IG as you said, um, it's only an application now in Germany as a tremendous chance to enhance the understanding of the importance of uh, internet governance. Um, so um, we propose basically three things and I'll be really brief. Um, there's been a process uh, to give more structure to the program, for example, by using tags attached to all the sessions. And there were other innovations that were already mentioned here by the speakers who were um, talking before me. And I think that, uh, I mean, we appreciate that very much, but we need to continue this development by uh, also discussing the question whether, for example, it might be a good idea to develop content tracks for the IGF, um, you know, um, developing tracks that uh, give more structure to the entire program because many participants, especially the ones coming as newcomers to the IGF, see it as a very confusing program that's being presented to them. And I think uh, this has nothing to do with the content uh, because the content is great in many instances. It's uh, more about the structure of the program. And, and I think that um, the civil society and uh, academia have extensive experience in organizing conferences of this size, so uh, we will be happy to be part of the process and contribute knowledge to that. Um, then, secondly, uh, both civil society and academia have suffered from restrictive and erratic handling of uh, visa rules and procedures um, presently and in the past. And we do very much hope that the German government will use the opportunity of an IGF happening in Germany to set an example for a further inclusion of these groups um, by um, being, um, let's say, um, a little more uh, opening and welcoming to uh, um, people from especially the global south from these uh, groups that I represent here. And the third thing is that civil society needs funding. Everyone knows that. Um, the inclusion also depends on people being able to travel and to be accommodated uh, at the IGF. So um, maybe it is a good idea to create a shared fund. It doesn't have to be a government fund alone, but it could be a shared fund by government and the private sector to also uh, distribute um, uh, uh, travel grants and uh, probably uh, scholarships for people wanting to attend the uh, Internet Governance Forum in Germany. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for those very practical proposals. Next is the, person, the, the gentleman in the back and another one. 
And then your, please, floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Walter Natris. On behalf of seven internet-related organizations from the Netherlands, I organized a session on day zero with almost exactly the same title. Um, I'm not going to repeat what exactly came out of it, because there will be a report and everybody can read it, but uh, just latching on to what has been said. Um, I think that, that what is important is to look at the process how we actually arrive at the topics that are relevant at an IGF. That is one of the main outcomes, a better process, which leads perhaps to new formats, but mostly to catering to the different stakeholders so that we've been missing industry and government more and more, I think, within the IGF. That seems to be because they're time restrained, money restrained, but they want to have the topic that is most on their mind. And if it's not there, it's not that much of interest to participate anymore. The second one is the intangible and tangible outcomes. Many things come out of the IGF, and then they're stuck on that website, and nobody will ever find them again, because who reads all these reports, right? If we have a success, I think the IGF needs to learn how to celebrate it not have an IGF and come back a year later. No, we want to convince organizations that currently are not present and do not really understand what the IGF is about, what actually could be their thing to come next year because, hey, we had a success, it involves us, it, it, the outcome is really something which is relevant to us, and then perhaps they will understand what they can contribute next year to this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, uh, gathering. So, in other, in other words, there's a lot the IGF can actually win by changing the way it's thinking about itself, create new creative formats that will actually change potential outcomes. And that is something which we will write about more, but something I wanted to share with you today. So, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for reminding us of the interests of the various groups to come here and to be present and to make their voice heard and to take away new ideas. Thank you. Floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, my name is Peter Helmonds, and I'm a business rep representative. Um, I'm somewhat of an IGF alumnus, or WISIS alumnus. I participated in both the WISIS in Geneva and in Tunis. I was a member of uh, the co coordinating committee of business interlocutors at the time. Uh, after that, uh, in the International Chamber of Commerce, we formed BASIS, which is short for business action to support the information society, which is more or less the rallying point for business uh, internationally around issues of the WISIS and the IGF. <clears throat> um, this year I started my own company, so I'm representing no one but myself. Um, I think in terms of the IGF in Germany, um, I'm very glad to hear uh, that we're already starting with the preparation time because preparation is crucial. Um, I would like to offer some advice, perhaps it sounds a little bit like criticism, but multi-stakeholder is not just a word. It's not something that we pay lip service to, but it's something that we should incorporate. It's a state of mind. It's a way of recognizing that um, the issues around uh, the IGF and ICT for development cannot be solved by one stakeholder group alone. And that in all venues and aspects, it should be recognized that it's not just one stakeholder inviting others to participate, but that we should have a process that from the start includes all of the stakeholders, as we have said in Geneva and in Tunis, on an equal footing. Um, as to business participation in Germany, I have been a member of the Bitcom Public Affairs a working group for more than 10 years, and that has the, the Bitcom head of um, the international. But I, I can tell you that if you want to get industry participation in an issue like the IGF, look beyond Bitcom, because the Bitcom is not the venue to seek broad participation of the ICT industry in international issues. What you need to do is to look beyond Can you Bitcom. explain for our international public Bitcom? Hmm? Can you explain Bitcom? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, Bitcom is the German Federal Association for the IT and Telecom industry, but it's not the only one. It's a sub, uh, it's basically a subset of the whole industry. There's one uh, 
very well-known uh, IGF, Participating Industry Association, which is ECHO, which until two weeks ago was headed by Professor Rotert. Um, and uh, that is definitely one of the associations that should be invited, but I think we should look beyond. We should look at the BDI and issue a broad invitation to industry that are active internationally and to German industry, not just the international representatives uh, or the, the representatives of international uh, ICT industry that only have a focus on the German market and they have no issue in talking about international issues. I also, um, I just mentioned uh, Professor Rotet, I agree with him, we should have less of these packed panels. Uh, we should look at formats that have worked in the past that are going beyond that. Um, such as open mic sessions, we should definitely, and I'm, I'm finished almost, um, we should definitely include ways for remote participation and prepare for that in advance, early enough in advance, so you have remote participation hubs. And I think in today's world what we should have is an app. We should have a very cool app that it works on iPhone and Android phones and Windows phones and whatever and on the web that uh, where people can do something like we've done here with the schedule app or whatever but uh, to in in include and introduce uh, more participation possibilities. Thank you and I'm willing to contribute to the preparation process in the coming years. Thank you very much. Thanks for the concrete proposals, especially the last one and for the what you call multi-stakeholderism as a state of mind. Mr. Kumar is on the list. You are also an old hand, indeed, of Thank IGF you. and yeah. <laughs> Internet like Governance. Peter, Ukraine. I'm a veteran of the process. Yes, Marcus Kumar speaking for the scribes. I was the head of the Secretariat for the first five years, and I kept being involved in the IGF. Currently, I'm the chair of the IGF Support Association. Uh, I came in late. Please excuse me. I was uh, co-facilitating the main session on dynamic coalitions, and when I came in, I heard Lynn talk about these intercessional processes and they have made great progress in actually producing tangible outcomes and again picking up on what has been said uh, Wout mentioned that the IGF has never been very good at actually showcasing the outcomes and the output and the impact and the IGF has had impact and it has uh, but it's quite often intangible and it may not be able to connect the dot and to trace it directly back to the IGF. But one, for instance, very tangible impact is the Kenyan government changed the constitution and introduced the requirement to have multi-stakeholder consultations before they change le le legislation. And this is a indirect impact of the IGF and its multi-stakeholder approach, just to name one. But uh, there, and there's a great role a government can have, and we look forward to this possibility, this very, uh, I would say, almost certain possibility that we will go to Germany for the 2019 IGF. A host country that is a member of the G8, for instance, has a very direct reach to big countries, and we have talked about the imbalance in participation. Michael mentioned that, and I think the weakness is that governments don't see the need to come to the IGF, and there the host country can play a tremendous role in convincing governments that there is actually important to go to the IGF, to have these discussions. During this IGF, there's a big threat going on cybersecurity, and the IGF is the only forum where you can have this type of discussion with all stakeholders involved. And the notion that no stakeholder group can do, solve a problem alone is, I think, the raison d'etre of the IGF. Uh, that is uh, where people come to the IGF, but governments need to be made aware of that. And in the Best Practice Forum on Cybersecurity, for instance, we had the government of China made a contribution. They recognized the need for that, and it would be great if other governments also actually took this possibility seriously and actually engaged more proactively instead of just coming to observe. So there I have great confidence in the government of Germany to mobilize interest among its partner and reaching out to other important governments to put it on the agenda for the year 2019. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much, especially um, something that Ambassador Fonseca already said, also make it relevant for other organizations so that it's being connected with all kinds of different fora. We have two more speakers for the moment. You first and then Hans Becker. The floor is yours, please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Jim Prendergast with the Galway Strategy Group. Agree a lot with what Marcus said uh, about, you know, especially from a business perspective, um, getting governments to come to the IGF and participate more fully. I admit I don't have any answers or solutions to how we solve that problem, but I think that's a, a concern that uh, is probably spread across all the stakeholder groups. Um, the, the only other suggestion I would have is more process oriented. This is starting to feel a lot like the open consultations that take place at the beginning of the IGF cycle, which is fine. Um, I, I would suggest that when that period does begin, um, you take the key elements that you're hearing as part of this session and take the report from this session and maybe you know, transform it into a contribution for the open consultation as part of that process so it gets fed into the MAG and the MAG is aware of it as a whole and may be able to act on some of these suggestions. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks also for the brevity of your contribution. Please, yes. Uh, I'm Hans-Peter Dittler from ISOC, ISOC Germany and ISOC International. And I, I like what I hear a lot and I think uh, we should really reach out uh, to all relevant parties in Germany to organize this in a, in a common way and common place. And uh, one specific thing, uh, Matthias was talking about how to invite more people around the world and make it possible to come to an IHF and get more participants from other, uh, from uh, less uh, privileged countries. And I believe ISOC is doing quite a, a good job in bringing people to the IHF. We have an ambassador program, we have more than uh, 30 to 40 people to each IGF and I would propose we team up in this uh, action and not having five different programs each reaching out but uh, trying to combine uh, money to make this one big thing and allow people to come in and I volunteer to be a focus point to coordinate this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think we still have time for one or two statements. Oh, you first and then the gentleman in the back and then we see whether we have enough time for you. Please. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Birgit, uh, also working for the German government but at the Ministry for Development Cooperation. So I just wanted to react uh, to your comment because indeed uh, our concern um, as part of um, development cooperation would really be to uh, strengthen the voices from the global south to uh, be able to uh, participate actively and bring in uh, their uh, points of view and their sides and uh, I am missing them a little bit in this section, but I think there are still lots of opportunities in this uh, following two years before we will hopefully have the IGF in Germany uh, to get this process started. Um, because there are also so many recommendations coming out of the IGF, uh, we, which we should take on board, uh, for example, f uh, to implement the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we cannot achieve them without using ICT uh, for development. So um, I think at least a three quarter of the program reflects to development uh, cooperation issues and the digital world has no borders, but we shouldn't discuss uh, with the absence of all these people. And particularly if we uh, have the the IGF um, now um, in the three upcoming years, oh well, this year in Europe and, um, and then in two years in Europe, uh, we should really make sure that maybe we can have a fund or whatever to strengthen the voices from the global south. So I think we can all work together with the German government to make this possible. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. It's multi not only in terms of sector, but also in terms of countries, indeed. Sir. Close yours. Could you please Thank you. Yourself? My name is uh, Leonid Torov, and uh, I'm from Russia originally, but I work in Asia Pacific. Uh, two quick comments. Well, as you would imagine, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, for the last three IGFs, including this one, Asia was uh, more or less underrepresented, let's say so, uh, because of different reasons. And uh, now I just want to focus on the something very uh, specific issue because we talked about some uh, tangible outcomes, whatever. So it uh, dawned on me, I was attending a session on small island developing states, which was mostly for young people. Uh, they were in the room and uh, I was really, uh, 
frustrated at seeing that those young people basically uh, fell our footprints, which was, uh, I mean, there was just a, you know, that a regular round table discussion when people were lamenting or claiming or stating whatever uh, difficulties and hardships they face. And there was a uh, little uh, or no attempt whatsoever to call for some kind of uh, constructive, more constructive exchange of views and, uh, you know, formulating some uh, common approach uh, to whatever challenges they are facing. It was only by the end of that session that the moderator woke up and suddenly said, what if we create a network, you know, for further communication, whatsoever. I mean, those young people were nearly, uh, well, they nearly fall, uh, fell asleep during the session because that was too boring for them and not inspiring at all. My concern is that uh, for the IGF, not only tangible out outcomes matter, but also some kind of legacy that we should generate and uh, retain through uh, both uh, uh, IGFs and intercessional periods. And uh, I believe that uh, in that sense, we should focus on such sessions which would uh, not only produce some kind of reports, you know, whether country or regional reports, but uh, some uh, success stories or specific cases on which uh, in the course of uh, some subsequent discussion, people could build uh, some uh, uh, BCPs or some other instruments which would enable them uh, to coordinate their activities further on and to spread the word, so to say, within their respective territories or regions. And that's number one. And number two, uh, Eurodig, which I uh, also had a privilege to attend, and Asia-Pacific Regional IGF, IGF, has a very good practice of merging sessions of the same, more or less, on the same topic. And I am appalled at seeing so many sessions under nearly the same titles and probably addressing the same issues, which basically steal a lot of valuable time during these three days when we are together. I mean, I may be wrong. I can see that some people uh, disagree with me. But I think that that would be a very uh, constructive way uh, to build a more sound agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like the idea about success story telling. I think one minute, if you can really reduce it to a short time, because then I would head over to my colleague for a kind of resume. Please. It, I have got only a short remark. I'm a consultant for German Gover for um, German Ministry of Interior, and I'm a long fellow of all the internet organizations like ICANN and RIPE and so on. And um, it's my second IGF, and when I go through the sessions, go through the floors here, my impression is there are uh, an amount of people who is a little bit lost in this uh, circus uh, due to the fact that the uh, existing structures of internet governance are quite complex. And uh, I would propose perhaps we, we need some uh, day zero um, uh, ground uh, workshop, which explains uh, uh, who is ITF, who is ICANN, um, uh, who, who are the rears, and uh, what is the role of ISOC, and so on, and uh, uh, where is the IGF in all this, and uh, to, to uh, support a common understanding um, supporting these discussions, because sometimes uh, people uh, talk in different languages. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good point. We take it for granted that everybody who's coming knows all about the IGF. Yeah. Um, colleagues, the next panel is already gathering outside, so uh, I would like to close our speakers list and pass the floor to Mr. Giedel, who is, uh, well, introduce yourself maybe yes. thank and you explain very much, your role. Ambassador. Uh, my name is Rudolf Griedel. I'm head of the unit in the Ministry for Economic Affairs dealing with internet governance and multi-stakeholder processes. Um, it is a new uh, entity that has been um, uh, founded uh, actually some uh, weeks ago in order to prepare, uh, amongst others, this uh, 2019 uh, IGF. And um, we're happy to working with all of you together. And um, I also am one of the hopeful, perhaps prospective members of the MAG. Um, and um, on this um, behalf, I also want to participate uh, in this um, forum to, to prepare the IGF. I think that we have perhaps two, 
two big issues and then some smaller issues under these. One is organization, one is uh, results. Uh, on the organizational uh, issues, I feel one issue is uh, access, access multi-stakeholder, the nature of the multi-stakeholder process. So there has been talk about including the global south, uh, giving visas, uh, in, including more businesses, including more governments. Um, certainly this is um, partly or in some parts even uh, exclusively uh, par uh, part for the um, host country. And uh, I think we will work together with our colleagues in the other ministries on these issues. Um, the, the second under organization, I think, is the proceedings. How, how does the IGF proceed? Uh, there has been um, sometimes, uh, some people say that we need more structure, then we need, that we need smaller panels with more relevant outcomes, that uh, the proceedings should be a little bit more interactive, um, and uh, the um, high-level session uh, that has been uh, designed in a new way was one of the examples of how to change proceedings from 30 minutes uh, statements to a more shorter interactive uh, kind of uh, proceeding. Um, and uh, on, the, on the side of how to involve people better, there were perhaps two ideas. One was this day zero teach-in, I would say, how, what is the IGF, and the other one was to create an app uh, on, for, for orientation and, and, and perhaps giving uh, more structure. On the result side, um, I feel that there is, a, uh, there is a, a good sense of what has already been achieved on the side of more tangible and more uh, concrete results, but still there is a um, appetite for more on this. Um, without losing the multi-stakeholder -stake nature of the whole IGF. So this is going to be challenging, and I think in the MAC we will have to think about uh, ways. Um, but it has also been stressed that, that the IGF or the multi-stakeholder process is somehow also a name in itself. I mean, the, 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 the fact of people coming together, discussing and having uh, an insight and a deep insight, and then again going back to their constituencies, spreading it into legislation or uh, business um, guidelines or whatever, is also um, perhaps not so tangible, but it is a result of the IGF. So on both um, issues, tangible, non-tangible results, we, we could think um, how can we do it better. One uh, proposal was uh, to build on success stories. I think that has been already done in the best practices um, segment, but perhaps we could focus on this in the process. We are at the beginning of the process. Um, I think it is uh, a good beginning. We have two years time now and uh, together with you and uh, everybody outside in the remote uh, participation, um, we will uh, work on this. We will um, include all the stakeholders. We will try to make it relevant for all the stakeholders and uh, to, uh, to have a, a, a good IGF with good proceedings, good participation and good results. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I think one important key word was, you mentioned it and also others, the intercessional period. So it's not just the conference, the yearly conference, and intercessional works both ways. I think those who are here have to talk to their own constituency, spread the word about the IGF, what, what's being done, but also give feedback to those who organize the next and the following IGF. So uh, please make sure that you remain active in, in both directions, and I look forward to, uh, well, learning about inputs and a very creative and active multi-stakeholder constituency that works for the next IGF. Thank you very much for coming. And I'm afraid we have to close this now because the next uh, panel will be here in a few minutes. Thanks again. Bye-bye.